Hi there guys! Thanks for tuning in to episode 2 of iPhone Home, brought to you by Pop-Up Gaming, YouTube's finest weekly video scene channel for everything that's iOS and more. On this week's episode, Halo Spartan Soldier. Can it do for iOS what it did for Xbox? Let's see about that. Or oh, what about Dryland? A downright dirty, gritty, Mad Max inspired role playing game. After that, it's the one that got away. Part of the show where I review a game that slipped through the crack and it escaped my attention for one reason or another. That game is Quest Keeper. And finally, this week's news, where I give you a roundup of all the upcoming games that we can all look forward to. So with no time to waste, let's get on with it, because, well, uh, this... Hey guys, you know what time it is. It's time for this week's Top Picks. When I heard that Microsoft were making a new version of Halo for the mobile market, I had a terrible feeling that it was going to be absolute shite. Because obviously it wasn't going to be in the third person, was it? How could it possibly work? However, my fears were unjustified and to be really self-critical, a bit narrow-minded really, which yeah, you know, I'll hold my hands up to that. However. As soon as my Spartan Super Soldier jumped into that Scorpion tank, that was it. I knew this game was for me. You take control of a Spartan Super Soldier that is in some kind of simulator that recreates the events that took place in, in Halo 2, strangely enough. In the title screen, you have the option to select the tutorial which, to be fair guys, I recommend you do because, you know, obviously it teaches you the basics such as shielding, melee attacks, weaponry, and how to interact with your surroundings, things like that. What it also does is teach you the more advanced techniques that you'll find essential for kicking Covenant and Promethean butt. You'll learn how to charge your plasma rifle, use grenades, get to grips with all the different types of armour, which, let me tell you, they're seriously cool. Then of course, our awesome scorpion tank, which I'm so glad they included in this game. Some of these techniques would be hard to guess if you decided to skip the tutorial altogether. When you get into the main game, OMFNG, the graphics are sexy as hell. But as you guys know, graphics don't make it the game. Oh no. Well, it's a good job because the gameplay is freaking awesome too. Your soldier is guided along by a sergeant who politely mentors you on how to kick the enemy's rear end. The level design itself is it's quite linear, not offering up much in the way of exploration, but that's fine by me because at the end of the day, Halo Spartan Strike is a balls to the wall, run and gun, with a little tiny sprinkle of strategic and stealth elements. This makes Halo like a nice Victoria sponge, really easy to digest, but it won't spoil your dinner as opposed to if Halo was a turn-based tactical resource management fest, which would make it more of a, a Christmas cake. Rich and heavy with complex flavour, but only something you could just get down your neck once a year. But thankfully it's not that. So, I highly recommend that you give Halo Spartan Soldier a go. Not because it does something astoundingly new or anything like that. Oh no, no. Because it does something that's been done a million times before. And here's the crucial part. It does this format incredibly well, which puts it up there with the best of them. 
I give this an explosive 8.7 out of 10. It's not over until the fat lady sings, ladies and gentlemen. Here's another one of my weekly top picks. Oh my god, does anyone think it's a little bit echoey in here? People might think I'm in a toilet or something. This game, Dryland, is a really gritty action RPG set in what looks like a post-apocalyptic Mad Max inspired landscape in which the world's water supply appears to have completely evaporated. In my opinion, Dryland creators succeeded in making the game world as visceral, abrasive and as rough as possible both in the art style, sounds and dialogue. This creates a really honest and, in my opinion, genuine atmosphere that I've not seen for a while. The character you play is a sort of a, a rough neck and he's been in prison for reasons completely unknown in a small town that's recently been attacked and robbed of all of its resources. The main chief decides to release you Basically on the proviso that you help restore the ransacked town. Not that he had much choice because most of the people, the townspeople, had been killed anyway. At first, you're sent on little fetch quests. Nothing too strenuous at first, it's just basically just to ease you in. As time goes by, the quest becomes more and more involved as the story opens up. There are even little side quests for you to complete for extra guns and perks, etc. Speaking of guns and perks, Dryland has plenty of both to keep the fun factor. As you level up, you'll receive perk points that increase your character's abilities, such as survival, increased backpacks, duality, and in hacking which is really important as some computers will not allow you anywhere near them unless you have over a certain level. The sooner you get leveled up the better in my opinion. Oh and the backpack as well that's really useful I suggest you put points in that as well. To be completely honest with you I wasn't expecting much with dry land, but after giving it a good old go for a while, I found it really, really enjoyable. So if you guys are looking for a well-rounded action RPG, then I would suggest that you can't go far wrong with Drylands. And although it is called Drylands, I'm going to give it a juicy 7.3 out of 10. Ooh, the one that got away! Come back right now, you little bugger! Last week, I sadly didn't get to play the awesome Quest Keeper. But, if I had, it would have certainly been among my top picks. But, hey ho, it's all water under the Trolls Bridge now. Quest Keeper is a really simple game that is easy to learn, but difficult to master. You start off in a cold, dark dungeon. Well, it looked cold. I didn't see any central heating anywhere. Different dungeons can be opened up with an initial purchase of 150 gold coins that can easily be collected throughout the dungeons or maybe watching adverts. Or you could opt for a modest in-app purchase. Each dungeon has its own theme and different obstacles to avoid. It's your reign to get as far through these dungeons as possible without getting your testicles impaled on a spike hmm bollock kebabs or most commonly falling down a bottomless pit or maybe having your face chewed off by a deranged spider so you move your little chap <laughs> whoa wait a minute that sounds so wrong <laughs> you move your character by using a wiping gesture or what you can do is try one continuous movement you can change that in the settings 
Both of which, to be completely honest, I found a little bit tricky at first, but six or seven deaths later, and I got it down pat. Quest Keeper has a really good looking isometric view that I really like in game. Similar to Crossy Roads, actually. I really would urge you to give it a go as it's free to play and the adverts popping up from time to time really don't detract from the overall experience. So I'm going to give Quest Keeper a magical 8.1 out of 10. So here we are guys, we're onto the brand new section of the show where I tell you all the latest up and coming games for iOS. First up is a game that caught my eye a while back but it's still in development. Samros 3 by the intriguing Czech developers Amanita Design. If you don't know who they are, then they're the same guys that brought you one of my favourite point and clicks, Machinarium, and the truly inspired Botanicula. I'm pretty sure you'll be familiar with at least one of them. If this trailer and the pictures are anything to go by, then it's going to be an absolute mind-bending Dali-esque type trip fest. Release date is still a little bit vague at this point, but the Windows and OS X versions will be out this year, with the iOS and Android versions following shortly afterwards. The next game I'm absolutely chomping at the bit to get my grubby little hands on guys is Shooting Stars by the newcomers Blood Irony and no it's not a game where you run down the street of Hollywood gunning down poor defenceless celebrity oh no it's a game where you run through the streets of Hollywood gunning down poor aliens disguised as defenceless celebrities obviously duh by the looks of things guys it's gonna be some weird mashup of and I quote, shoot em up, collect loot, road like, lasers, which presumably means lasers, although with a trailer like this, to presume anything is probably a bad idea. Rainbows, daily runs, I really hope that's nothing to do with diarrhea. Celebrities, awesome soundtrack, hoverboards, holy shit, where do I sign up? Hoverboards? Bananas, clones, rainbow muffins, and why not? Pixel pawn, censored with pixels. I should think so too. We don't do that kind of thing here. We're British, don't you know? Dead fish, New York cup, candy, Nikki spinach, Grindel, hipster, memes, horsehead, luce libra, game over, and your mama. Woo. With content like that, how can you not be buzzing to see what all this is about on release? Which incidentally will be around summer, fingers crossed. And that is it for this week's news. And I'm afraid to tell you at the end of this week's show, which I hope you all enjoyed. But don't cry, as I'll be back exactly the same time next week with another big fat greasy hamburger stuffed full of iOS goodness. Minus the gherkins. Well, actually, you know what? Sod it. Pickles and all.